2 Chronicles 33. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 50 and 5 years, the longest reign in Jerusalem. But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, the most wickedest king. The most wickedest and the most longest reign king. In the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen. So when God's looking at this man's uh, sin, he says, you're no better than the heathen. The heathen are, you know, Jeremiah 10, they're, they're doing Christmas tree. And we're going to see a lot of the heathen practices that are in this chapter. And we're going to see what God's attitude is towards it. Whom the Lord has cast out before the children of Israel. So what we're going to read now is no ever thought for God to have the Jew do. It's an abomination. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down. So he builds back the high places. Hezekiah got rid of them. God was happy. I guess God don't like these high places. And he reared, raised up altars for Balaam. Now Balaam again, that I am is plural. Multiple gods. The stars. The comets. Again, Baal is the sun god. He's the male god. I, 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 I'm supposed to say that today. Asherah is the moon god, the female god. I can say that today. And Baal and Asherah come together and they produce all the stars. That's mythology. Both Greek and Roman with this names changed. And what we see here is he's worshiping all the gods and made groves. That's a little plant, plants or trees and shrubs with a statue in the middle. Many Catholic churches have those. And we'll see what God thinks about those in a moment. And worship all the hosts of heaven. That's the stars and what planets they knew. And serve them. So he worships up the divine and then he does things for them. Whatever the priest, whatever the people of the religion tells him to do, he's doing it. Now, when the Magi came following the star when Jesus was two years old, I can say that. They weren't worshiping the star. They weren't ser serving the star. They were using the star as navigational ships were... In the past, they were using it as navigational aid. But he's got his star. He's got his lucky star. He probably would have a, a star named after him if he paid a certain amount of money and all that. He would. We're going to see he's going to get into astrology. He's going to get into his horoscope. And if, the, if Mars doesn't line up for that day, he can't do something. And we have in the presidency of America, Nancy Reagan would have the Secret Service well, this day we can't have Mr. Reagan do anything because Nancy said it's not in the stars. So the entire United States government was not under the president. It was under the first lady and astrology. Nothing's new in the sun. Here's astrology in the kingdom of Judah. Nothing new under the sun. So serve them. He built altars, plural, in the house of the Lord. There's a brazen altar. Where people would bring the animals. When you go into the holy place. There was the altar of incense. The golden. And there was only the priest. He has put in that temple. Other altars to other gods. And this is not the first time it's happened. Whereof the Lord had said. In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. Well, you got Balaam, you got Baal, you got uh, Cupid, you got, you know, Orion, you got Gemini, you got all, and then they're just different names, but they're the same gods. And God says, my name is supposed to be there, not Baal. It's supposed to be the worship of me, not other altars. And he built altars, plural, again, for all the hosts of heaven. 
Solomon built temples for the gods, so is Manasseh. He would have the Orion three stars. He would have the crab star. He would have the Virgo altars. And you see that on representation today on some sundials. You see in the newspaper when they show you the picture of Virgo and these stars and those stars. That's what we're seeing here. And two court to the house of the Lord. All this is going on in the temple of the Lord that Hezekiah cleaned up. Hezekiah fixed up. Hezekiah had the, the Passover. He has brought into Hezekiah's proper worship of God. Oh my, Manasseh has brought the world into the temple. That wouldn't happen. No one would think about having a good church being ruined by the world. No, that would not happen. Absolutely not. And yes, it is. Churches are recorded to have psychics working on their staff for whatever reason. It's ridiculous, but it's happening in 2019. And he caused his children to pass through the fire to valley the son of Hinnom. Again, that's Molech. That's that brazen statue that had the stomach of fire and mechanical arms to throw those children into that belly to burn to their gods. He is a murderer of his children that God gave him. Let's see how God thinks about that. Also observe times. Now that would be again that oh well, Sagittarius is in this thing of that. I can't do that today. Today is a good day to make financial movements. Today is not a day to go out. That's that's observing time. Whether he read it in the newspaper or went to somebody, he is forecasting his life, his days, by what people do in the modern newspaper today. And isn't it amazing? Why is it? That you will find in most newspapers, the horoscope is on the same page of the comics. And the crossword puzzle. Trying to get the children interested? Is that what you're trying to do? Most of the horoscopes are with the comics. And or the crosswords. What are you doing? That's time. And use enchantments. It's a form of magic. He, I guess, would say he's a Jewish magician in the honor of God Jehovah. You wouldn't have any magicians today in the Christian church. No, not that. You wouldn't be using enchantments and doing magic in front of God, calling yourself a Christian magician. No, you wouldn't be doing that. Nothing new under the sun. It's happening right here in the kingdom. And use witchcraft. That's what Saul did. He went to see a witch. So if there would have been a time to have Mr. Potter's movies and books in the time of NASA, he would gather everybody in the church band to go see the wizard movies and the witchcraft movies. That wouldn't happen in the church, eh? It does. He is doing the practice of witchcraft. Black magic. There it is. He's doing it. He's using it. Use witchcraft. And dealt with familiar spirits. He's sitting at a table and they're trying to call dead spirits like King Saul did, called up Samuel. Oh, Uncle Louie died. Uncle Louie, where'd you leave the will? Uncle Louie, where's your insurance policy? Please tell us. How you doing, Uncle Louie? That's what he's doing. And with wizards. That's a popular that's a popular Hollywood subject and book subject that is found also in the children and teens of the ch Christian churches today. You know, potions and magic and spells. Now let's see what God thinks about it. Ready? He wrought Messiah Mas Mas yeah, Manasseh wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord. God just said what we read is evil. 
And yet it's happened in the churches. Let's read what else what God says. To provoke him, God, to anger. That makes God angry. So when you got Mary in the front lawn with little trees around it, that's not an aid to worship. That is evil, and that makes God angry. And then when you got a, a, a I know two people go out there with Christian magic in the pastors of the church, they like it and they support it. It is evil, and it makes God angry, and you cannot use it to be part of the evangelism when God hates it. That's we're learning a lot from Manasseh. And he set a carved image. I guess he called it an aid to worship. He took an image and he carved it. Or someone carved it. It would probably be wood or metal. The idol. The image. The idol. Which he had made. He made it. He is making his own gods. Along with the altar. His own eye which he made in the house of God. He added it to. When the people will come to serve God, there are other altars there. Altar to Jehovah. Altar to Baal. Altar to Astrid. Altar with Easter eggs. Altar to Santa Claus. Altar to the great pastor. And then here's my great idol. See? See, see how pretty he is? You see the bust? See it? Choose a God. Choose one. Go ahead. Choose one. Which God has said to David and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, Judah, will I put my name forever. And you have just ruined and blasphemed the name of the Lord. And that is one of the big Ten Commandments besides, thou shalt have no idols, shalt make no images. You have taken the Lord's name in vain. How do you take the Lord's name in vain? God said, my name is supposed to be there, not Baal. The law has prescribed for Manasseh everything he's doing is a violation of what God told him not to do. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have pointed for you, your fathers, so that they will take heed to do all that I have commanded them. Now you say, well, God had was going to remove them out by the end of Second Chronicles. He's going to have Babylon come in. Doesn't he root out and destroy uh, Jerusalem? Doesn't he destroy the temple? Yes. But there are still Jews of red mint left there. According to the word of the Lord, I will not. Uh, I'm going to leave a red mint. But most of you are going. And even when the Antichrist is here in the seven years of the tribulation period, there will be a red mint. There will be some Jews still in Israel, still in Jerusalem, when Jesus comes. But there will be a regiment somewhere else where Christ will pick them up. That land is their land, but when they sin, there will be consequences. According to all the whole law, which he's violated, and the statutes that ordinance by the hand of Moses, which he's violated. So Manasseh, let's see what happens, made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err. That's the first time that word shows up, err. Made him, made him error. Made them do wrong. And to do worse than the heathen. <laughs> you know what the heathen are to the, to the Gentile, uh, to the Jewish people, don't you? Ask Jonah. Ask Peter. Oh, I'm not going to go with them. They're the worst of the worst. And God insulted Israel by saying, you are worse than them. That is an utmost obscene thing that anybody can say about a Jewish person and it's coming from the Lord Jehovah. You're no better than they are. Remember remember Jonah. I want you to go to the Ninevites. I want you to go to the Ninevites. They are Gentiles. I want, no, I'm going, I'm going the other way, Lord. Peter, I want you to go to this Gentile. Uh-uh, Lord. Nothing unclean comes to my lips. And then one other time, Peter's sitting down and, he, and he's sitting down with, with some Gentiles and the Jews come up and he gets up and leaves because, you know, he doesn't want to offend anybody. And Paul calls him out. There are some 
worldly insults to people that are just obscured and obscene to call somebody. And this is what God said about Manasseh. You're worse than the Gentile. When you look at the ways of the Jewish person, that is hard. And that came from the Lord. You ought not call people names. God did. You ought not to name names. God did. Whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. Everything Manasseh has done is what the people in the land, the Canaanites, were doing. And God says, you guys are done. You guys are finished because of those sins. That's why when God told Israel, you go in there, you wipe out their gods, you wipe out their altars, you wipe out their pictures, you get rid of it so it don't come back. They didn't do it. And it's come back and it keeps coming back. You get a revival and then it comes back. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria. Chastisement, punishment, judgment. Here comes God bending Manasseh over and beating his butt. Huh? Then okay. the Lord thanked the Manasseh his people, but they would not hearken. He sent prophets, he sent men, he, he, he spoke to them, they're not listening. So he brings the Assyrians in. America has not listened, England has not listened, Europe has not listened. So the next great enemy of God that's coming, and I don't know when, will be the devil himself, the Antichrist. Now how many other judgments and things will happen before then, I don't know. But the ultimate judgment of God will be the seven years of tribulation. That's the time of Jacob's trouble. And took Manasseh among the thorns. You find this in Judges 8.16. It's a punishment. It's a beating. Thorns hurt. And bound him with feathers, chains, irons, handcuffs, feet cuffs. And carried him to Babylon. So he goes into captivity. This most wicked king goes into captivity. And there will be people out there, well, God will never forgive me for what I've done. Let's see what God will do. And when he was afflicted, Pain, sorrow, suffering, shame. I guess his gods didn't help him. He besought the Lord his God. Now get that. He has left all the gods. He has returned to God with all the, what he's done. Let's see what God does. And humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. And prayed unto him, God, and he was entreated of him, and healed his supplication, huh? heard. and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem, into his kingdom. Look at the restitution. He humbled himself, he repented, he got right, he prayed to God, and God said, okay, I'll bring you back. There is no one too vile, no one too wicked that God can't save, that God can't help, that God can't use. Remember, Moses killed a man. God used him. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Look at that. Anyone can repent and get right with God with a proper heart. <clears throat> now after this he built a wall without the city of David, Zion, in the east side of Gilhan, in the valley even to the entering in at the fish gate, you'll find this in Nehemiah the gate, and compassed about Ophel and raised it up a very great height, very high wall. And he put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah, building the military, strengthening in the armor. Now, what does repentance mean? He took away the strange gods. He didn't keep them. Get rid of that Christmas tree. Don't make excuses. Get rid of it. Get rid of the Easter eggs. That's Esther. 
get rid of it. That's what he did. And the idol. Out of the house of the Lord. He went to the house of the Lord, took that idol and said, that's gone. No more. I'll take that, please. That all the altars, plural, that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord. And in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. Get them out of here. Get them out of my presence. That's repentance. When you have forget, forsaken your sins and gotten right with God and do right, that's repentance. That's the new creature. That's the new birth. You don't start cleaning your life after you proclaim to be saved. Then you're not a new creature. That's a Bible doctrine being changed. We don't have works for salvation. We have works to show that we are saved. There's the work right there. He's getting rid of all the junk. He's going to have one big bonfire. What every Christian should do. Which I didn't do. And all the altars that he built in the mountain of the house of the Lord. And in Jerusalem cast them out of the city. And repaired the altar of the Lord. Something was wrong with that altar. He repaired it. And sanctified thereon peace offerings and thank offerings. Not only did he fix it, he brought animals. He said, priests, you offer this offering. He's giving God peace offerings because I have trespassed. He's giving God thanks offerings. Thank you, Lord God. I'm back home. Thank you, Lord God. You forgive me. Thank you, your God. And commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. After all the mess he got them in, in verse number uh, 9, does everybody do about face and serve God? Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places, yet unto the Lord their God only. The right God, the wrong way. That's what the churches are today. Funny how you can study history in the Bible, yet be present. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer unto his God and the words of the seers, the prophets, that spake to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel. That's verse 10, when they wouldn't listen. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. And that would have been 2 Kings 21, uh, 20, 21. His prayer also. And how God is entreated of him in all his sins. Sins. Not aid to worship. Not religion sins and his trespass and the places wherein he built high places and set up groves and graven images are sins they are sins before he was humbled he got humbled behold they are written amongst the sayings of the seers it's written in other books he had pride to had religion and the most Prideful people you will deal with are people who are involved in religion. They are pride of their position, of their church, and who they are. And you got to be broken with that pride to get right. So Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house. And Amon, his son, reigned in his death. And Amon was two and thirty, two and twenty years old when he began to reign. When he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Oh, here we go again. As did Manasseh his father. For Amos sacrificed unto all the carved images which Manasseh his father had made. And served them. So. When we read. Where do you say he cast them out? 15. No, 15. He said he cast them out of the city. He didn't destroy them. He just got, he threw them in the dump. And Amon went down to the dump and got them back. Manasseh should have melted them, destroyed them like Moses did. All the carved images which Manasseh's father had made and served him. And humbled not himself before the Lord. 
as Manasseh, his father, had humbled himself. So there was no repentance of Amos. But God, the Holy Spirit, makes sure he records that Manasseh got right. Manasseh was, was in pride. He humbled himself. Amon is in pride, but he won't humble himself. But Amon trespass is a trespass offering that was offered by Manasseh. Trespass more and more, made it worse. And his servants, Amon's servants, conspired against him and slew him in his own house. So he's murdered by his own people. And his servants conspired him and slew his own house. But the people of the land, the Jewish people, slew all them that had conspired against the king Ammon. So the ones that slew King Ammon, the people slew them. And the people of the land made jo Josiah, his son, king in his stead. There we go. We go through two kings. No man is so wicked that God can't help. Him. And yet, some men are just so wicked, there is no help for them. It's a heart condition. That's why Romans said, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Manasseh's heart was able to be broken. Amos' heart? Nope. All right. 